Let us enter into the word. Dear friends, I'm sure you must have heard the headlines these days of how Bill Gates and his wife Melinda were married for 27 years have decided to divorce. It was indeed a shocking news. And when we think of their relationship, we wonder what happened to them. They were so rich, their common wealth together, it seems, comes to about $150 billion. And everybody is wanting to know now how this divorce settlement is going to take place. Yesterday, the Fox News gave some indication that could probably lead to their collapse in their marriage. Because even before they married, they had this kind of arrangement before them that Bill will continue to meet with his ex-girlfriend. At least once a year, they would go out and spend some weekend together. But I think if having three people in a marriage, I don't think it will really work. Best is in Christ. Today, there, there are a lot of relationship problems, especially in marriage. And I'm sure all of us too, in, in our own way, struggle in relating well with people. And these past few days and in the coming weeks, the readings from the gospel focuses on the last discourse of Jesus, the final words of Jesus to his apostles that Jesus spoke to them at the Last Supper. And in these passages, Jesus is telling the disciples something that is so important for their lives that First of all, they needed to have a strong relationship with him. He who is one with me, I am the wine, you are the branches. Without me, you cannot bear fruit. And in today's gospel, we hear Jesus telling, This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Well, Jesus is reminding us today, that the foundation of our love for others is God's love for us. Yes, brothers in Christ, maybe the reason why many marriages are failing in the world because God very often is not part of the equation in our relationship with each other. And in today's gospel, Jesus is trying to tell us how we need to have deep friendship with him and that friendship with God is the foundation of our love for each other. And so Jesus tells us in the gospel today, greater love as no man than one who lays down his life for his friends. And so if we want to establish friendship with God, we need first and foremost to believe that God is fully committed to us. And by Jesus giving up his life for us, shows us that God is the perfect friend. Yes, Bernard is in Christ. We cannot establish a friendship with God without starting with this belief in this truth that God is more interested on in wanting to be a friend to us. God is more committed to us. He is willing to give up everything for us. And we too, if we want to be friends with God, our starting place is also believing in that friendship of God and also giving ourselves fully to God. 
That is the starting place when citizens in Christ. Secondly, Jesus tells us in his word, If you are my friends, you would do what I command you. Well, it seems that friendship with God requires obedience. But here Jesus is talking about trust that is so important in friendship. And if we really trust God, if we believe that God is really interested in our happiness, then whatever he tells us to do, it is for our own good. And if we trust in God, we will believe that whatever that is even happening in our life, God is, has something wonderful for us. And so the second important aspect of friendship with God is trust. We need to trust God if we want to follow him and obey him. And thirdly, Jesus tells us, I call you friends because I've told you everything I've heard from my father. Yes, friendship with God is based on that foundation that God has revealed his heart to us. He has revealed his plan to us. He doesn't have secrets that he wants to withhold from us. This means that if we want to be friends with God, we must enter into a dialogue with him. Communication is so important in friendship. And God has taken the initiative to communicate himself. And if we are serious about friendship with God, we will try to find out what is God's plan, what is he see revealed, especially through his word. And we will Speak to God from the depths of our hearts. Tell him what is actually going on in our lives. Versus in Christ, in true communication, there has to be honesty and truth. At the same time, we have to listen and try to understand what is God's plan. Yes, sometimes... In our relationship with God, we struggle. But when we sit with Him, when we talk to Him, when we listen to Him, we can discover what God is about in our life. And fourthly, Francis is in Christ. Jesus tells us, It is not you who chose me, but I chose you, appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain. Yes, friendship with God has to lead to action. We can't say that we are friends with God if we don't bear fruit in our life. And so Jesus is reminding us, He has taken the initiative to want to be friends with us. It is He who, who has chosen us it is he who wants us. But as we come to him and as we develop our friendship with him, then we are called to mission. We are called to bear fruit. We are called to love as Jesus has loved us. And so, brothers and sisters in Christ, in today's reading gospel, we are reminded that if we want to love others effectively, it has to start with friendship with God. Start today, brothers and sisters in Christ, believing, first of all, that God is more interested to be a friend than very often we are interested. Secondly, we must trust that God is something good for us. Thirdly, we must be open and 
honest with God and we must listen to him as we share openly with him. And lastly, brothers and sisters in Christ, a true friend is one who carries out whatever the friend wants us to do. And as we look to Jesus, we can also learn the same principles in our relationship with others. If we want to love others, we learn from Jesus. First, we must be committed to others. We must always desire the best interests of others. Secondly, we must know what our friends or our family members or our spouse want for us. We must be sensitive to their needs. Thirdly, we must have honest and open communication. And lastly, brothers and sisters in Christ, love is all about action. We must do something practical for the good of others. God bless you.